Delayed in transit, these first pictures show Koreans welcoming Australian troops in the traditional manner. But the Aussies are not very interested in bouquets at the moment. Led by their young commander, Lieutenant Colonel Green, they are eager to go out and earn them at the front. They didn't quite know what held them back so long, but by lorry and plane they were soon up round Tegu. Now, with the British, they're across the 38th parallel and probably teaching the Koreans to waltz Matilda. For the GIs, the long, weary journey begins again as the United Nations order forces to cross the 38th parallel and continue till the Reds surrender. In Kum Chon, Marines enter the station to clear out snipers, but the only two Reds present are on the wall, and the North Korean Premier Kum Il Sen is removed. As the battle pushes north, refugees storm trains eager to hurry back to their homes. Most of them are women and children. What has happened to their men, they do not know. It is a mystery peace alone can solve. For others, horror ends up. As they retreated, the communists left grim evidence of their fears. Safe in death, they left 1,500 men, women and children of Chonju. These had no faith in communism, and for their doubt, they were murdered. Even so does communism rend a nation in twain, so that brother turns on brother to kill. Believe or die, that is the sole choice. This communist leader confessed that he had sent seven to their death. In their hour of freedom, the South Koreans turn on those who tortured them. To save him from vengeance, Marines take him on their tank. But he is a symbol of the problem the United Nations face. To unite in peace a people torn asunder by hate. To remove fear and the poison that sent its dupes to spread fear. <laughs> 